Mike Green, Cybersecurity Engineer with Optic Cyber Solutions. And today I want to provide a quick overview of the uh, initial public draft of 800-171 Revision 3. So uh, protecting and controlled unclassified information in non-federal systems and organizations or uh, 800-171 Revision 3 Initial Public Draft uh, was released this uh, week, uh, May 10th, 2023. Uh, in addition to the release of this document, there were also some companion artifacts released as well. Uh, the comments matrix to uh, ingest or any comments that are submitted from the community, a change analysis worksheet which shows the deltas between revision three and this new public draft, uh, prototype CUI overlay uh, which shows the tailoring from the 853 uh, revision five baseline controls uh, moderate to the new uh, draft 171, an FAQ uh, which provides um, just frequently asked questions from the community, um, and in addition, there's also a, a listing of an upcoming webinar that NIST will hold um, June 6th that will provide an overview of some of the um, recent changes to this uh, public draft. So there were a few significant changes in this public draft. Uh, the first one being the um, enhancement or, I guess, uh, baselining uh, 171 using 853 revision 3 and the moderate baseline from 53B. Uh, that's sort of the starting point, then tailoring that baseline down to um, resulting in this uh, draft of 171. Uh, there's also been updated tailoring criteria. Uh, Appendix C of this uh, public draft includes uh, criteria which shows the, um, the tailoring from the 53 baseline uh, control and control enhancements down to the 171, uh, which are focused on just confidentiality and, and not availability, availability and, and um, integrity. <clears throat> um, the focus has uh, been to increase uh, specificity of the requ uh, security requirements and remove ambiguity, and a lot of that is just the nature of using 53 as the baseline. Um, it's all been um, sort of updated at the transition from uh, 53 revision 4 to revision 5, so a lot of those enhancements and uplift are, are ported to 171. Um, there's also the introduction of um, organization-defined parameters. Um, these have been in 853 for some time now. That's not a not a, a, a artifact of the revision five, but they've also now been included in 171, <clears throat> and we'll get into those as an example uh, later. Uh, but essentially, they allow for tailoring or um, you know via either a selection or um, uh, actual implementation of how to implement define the specific parameter for implementing a subset of the the controls in 171. And then a prototype overlay, which the, um, shows the specific tailoring that went into the 53 controls down to the 171. So what was removed, what was considered, what was um, tailored, how were things changed? In some cases, some of the language was tailored specifically for 171. So there's a delta between 53. So that prototype overlay gives uh, an overview of all those um, uh, decisions and the actual um, items that have changed. So here we have a comparison of revision two and then the latest draft of revision, revision three. Uh, so revision two had uh, 14 families, 110 security requirements, and now the uh, draft has uh, 17 families, 138 requirements. There are three new uh, families in uh, revision three uh, draft planning, systems and services acquisition, and then supply chain risk management. Those are also in the uh, 53 uh, catalog as well, uh, based on moderate baseline. So those have been pulled over. As we mentioned, um, it's not the full suite. They have been tailored for 171. Um, another minor item as well. So uh, security assessment, the um, domain or uh, control family still remains, but it's also it's now re been renamed to security assessment and monitoring uh, in this latest draft. So here we have a listing of the additions to 171 uh, revision three draft. So 26 new security requirements across 13 uh, uh, control families. So here you'll see, you know, access control has one, uh, configuration management has four, et cetera. Um, and again, these are pulled from, uh, you know, starting with the 53 moderate baseline and kind of tailoring those and bringing in um, uh, new requirements into the 171 baseline. On this slide, we have the uh, withdrawals, uh, the withdrawal controls, and you'll see here there are 27 uh, total withdrawals across 10 control families, but you will notice that most of these uh, requirements that have been withdrawn have actually been incorporated into uh, uh, usually related controls. Uh, so you'll see access control, um, all the ones that are listed there, looks like it's about five or six, have been just uh, incorporated into other access controls, security, um, uh, uh, security controls. You will note for um, identification authentication, so it looks like 356 and 358, that's, those specific requirements have been, been withdrawn. 
Um, and then another one I'll point out here is for maintenance 371. That one's been re withdrawn and recategorized as NCO, uh, essentially meaning it doesn't impact or uh, um, impact confidentiality. So it's been removed for for that uh, specific reason. So although requirements have been removed, uh, withdrawn formally, they still remain. They've just been uh, reorganized in a new baseline. So what are organization defined parameters? I spoke about this a little earlier. Um, and essentially they are uh, criteria that are with specific subset or subset of some uh, security controls that allow for uh, flexible implementation. So you can tailor the specific um, uh, parameters in the um, control or the security control statement itself. <clears throat> um, those are defined uh, typically by the uh, agency that's implementing a specific uh, practice or, or control. Um, and these are also an artifact of NIST 853. Um, as I mentioned, they've, they've been, uh, the uh, ODPs have been an artifact of 53, um, not just revision five, they've been around for some time now. Um, I did provide an example here to kind of walk through, um, but just it, you know, show an example of an ODP. So here we have unsuccessful logon attempts, and you see the, the two assignments, organization defined parameters in both of these. <clears throat> so an organization, you know, based on a risk assessment, would determine what made sense for their organization um, if they didn't get specific uh, direction from a from a supporting um, agency. Um, so in this case, you know, they may limit log on attempts to five attempts within 30 minutes <clears throat> based on a risk assessment. But, you know, these are dynamic. Obviously, they want to be based on a risk assessment. So they make sense um, from a security perspective for your organization um, and system. <clears throat> but these are, you know, they're not hard coded. In some cases, there are other ODPs which are selection. So they will be you will actually select from a, a defined set of uh, criteria. Uh, one, two, three, et cetera, <clears throat> we make a selection. But in this case, this would just be an assignment um, of the organization uh, for implementation. Here we have some resources uh, related to uh, protecting and uh, controlled unclassified information. Uh, the first link here is uh, the landing page where you will find all these other uh, links provided. So the 171 um, <clears throat> draft, the comment template, the change matrix, and then the prototype overlay will all be listed there as well. Um, as far as comments uh, for this uh, initial public draft, uh, comments are due July, uh, July 14th of 2023, and you'll be able to find that email link um, if you go to that landing page there, if you want to provide any comments to NIST. Again, I'm Mike Green with Optic Cyber Solutions. I just want to provide you a quick overview. Thanks for watching.